this week, VC is down in Portland. Or is it? The biggest story in Portland tech is the teeniest, tiniest website for the world's smallest park. Radius goes nationwide. OVF is doing another one of those AI demo night thingamajigs. Need somewhere to co-work? Upstart Collective has it for free. Let's get into it. The big story this week is about the world's smallest park. It's a teeny tiny park, Millen's Park, the smallest park in the world, and you know, Guinness Book of World Records and that kind of thing. But this week, I heard that the smallest park in the world also has the teeniest, tiniest, smallest website in the world. If you want to see the Millen's Park website, a fan of Millen's Park has created one that is three pixels by three pixels. But the good news is they also let you zoom in. And as you can see, there are a few things you can click through there. You can learn more about the park. You can take some quizzes. You can figure out where the park is. But I think the most important part of this news, and this is where you come in because you get to participate, is that awesome teeny tiny site about the teeny tiny park has been nominated for a Webby. If you're not familiar with the Webbies, they used to be a really, really big deal. Like people used to get really hyped up about getting nominated for the Webbies in the early days of the Web 2.0 days. And I don't know what it is this year, but there's like a total renaissance, total resurgence around the Webbies. So Mill Ends Park, world's smallest park, has the world's smallest website, and that teeny tiny website has been nominated for a great big award. But the beauty of this whole thing is it's a crowd favorite award. If you can take a, a tiny amount of time for this teeny tiny park with a teeny tiny website to cast your one big old vote for the big Webby Awards, then maybe we'll have a Webby Award winning site. Put Portland on the map, as it were, with an awesome and just delightful website for one of the little wacky things that makes Portland Portland. Please subscribe. It'd be good to have you here every week. I'd love to keep you in the loop on what's going on, but in order to do that and make it convenient for you, subscribing is the easiest way to do that. So please subscribe. Thanks. You know, there was the whole thing where there was the dot-com days and then there was kind of a bust and then the web kind of started to come back and then there was the mortgage crisis. But then after the mortgage crisis, this kind of world of software as a service, cloud infrastructure, lots of gradients, all that kind of stuff started to happen. And it, it was kind of like a, a new bubble for the web. And back in those days, there were three major sites covering startups in the web space, in the tech space. Of course, there was TechCrunch. There was Mashable, which was, you know, really turning through a lot of content and highlighting a lot of things. And then there was Read Write Web, definitely one of the top five. I, I would count it among the top three publications of that point in time. And Read Write Web was founded by Richard McManus. It was, I always thought, kind of, and, and I'm biased here because I, I spent some time working for Read Write Web, but I always thought of it as kind of like, not intellectual per se, because I think maybe GigaOM was, was intellectual and analytical, but I thought Read Write Web always did a good job of being a well-researched and thoughtful publication. So not always about the biggest, brightest, newest kind of things, but, but also just kind of putting them in context for the reader base. Richard was one of those people that was a, a champion of that effort, but also his co-editor, Marshall Kirkpatrick, who ironically enough had been the first writer hired at TechCrunch, who then went over to Read Write Web to become finally co-editor and really helped, uh, you know, inform that publication and partner with Richard to make it something really incredible. You know, Richard is taking the opportunity to kind of look back and, and write a memoir about 
those days and read right web and all those kind of things and he's serialized it you know almost like a, a dickens novel he's releasing it piece by piece and we finally got into the part where marshall kirkpatrick enters the story so marshall kirkpatrick lived in portland so portland has now entered the game in terms of this memoir so if you're curious about what was going on back in the web 2.0 days i would highly recommend you visit richard's memoir of those days and now you have some even more contextual knowledge because portland will play a part i've really been enjoying this it's been a really a trip down memory lane i really think this book is going to be hugely valuable in terms of historical context for what was happening in the web at that time you know how airbnb lets you rent out other people's places for like sleepy time well radius focuses more on worky time so like daytime you need to work you need to collaborate with people you want to work from home but you don't want that home to be yours well that's what radius does they enable people to list their properties for rent they allow people to rent those properties to just give you a change of scenery a change of pace by working out of another location or if you happen to be visiting another city finding a location for you and your colleagues to kind of co-work out of that isn't your typical co-working space or maybe something that has a little more you know accoutrement if you will i suddenly slipped into french there i don't know why radius portland milwaukee expanded to the bay area but now the radius of radius is 1400 miles because they've expanded nationwide radius announced that they're now available nationwide as a curated service to help you find interesting and compelling and creative workspaces no matter where you are in the u.s so radius kind of like airbnb but instead of sleepy time it's worky time speaking of co-working you know there was this thing that happened where suddenly everybody had to work at home for a year or three and now everybody's more getting back into the hey even though i'm an introvert i i still like being around people i want to work around people i would like to co-work with other people maybe they're not part of my business maybe they're working on something entirely different but being in the same vicinity as them while they're working on their thing and i'm working on my thing that's compelling to me. Well, as luck would have it, Upstart Collective provides that very sort of space where people can work alongside one another. But what's coming up on April 15th, which is also tax day, is their free co-working day. So at Upstart Collective, April 15th, you don't have to pay anything. If you're a member of the community, you want to co-work with people, you want to hang out, the whole day is dedicated to free co-working at both Upstart Collective locations. So East Side and West Side, both open to co-working. I think the only caveat here I want to reinforce is Upstart Collective is designed for product-based companies, ideally product-based companies who are building something at venture scale in a traded sector business with the potential for exponential growth. No services, based companies if you have like clients if you charge hourly like those sorts of things that's not really the upstart vibe they're more interested in people who are building products so if that sounds like the company you're building and you're tired of working all by your lonesome in your basement maybe consider submitting an application and seeing if you're accepted to co-work at upstart collective on april 15th so you'll notice i'm wearing my fleece vest that's because i wanted to talk about vc in portland vc investments way way down in portland i think it would be really easy to go doom and gloom on this but thanks to our friends at the portland business journal thanks malia spencer for publishing this story and publishing it with a really compelling graph you can actually see that maybe portland vc isn't down maybe it just had a few years of uncharacteristic irrational exuberance and now these days it's kind of returned to where it was i think the other part about this story that's interesting is 
there's a lot of kind of private equity lumped in there. So it's not just like what you would think of as traditional venture capital activity at a pre-seed or seed stage or maybe series A or whatever. I think a lot of the money that's being figured into those graphs is really liquidity event kind of capital. So private equity investments, people being bought out, a little bit of apples and oranges, but I really liked the interview that Malia did with Diane Freeman of Voyager Capital, who is a VC here in Portland. And as she was saying, it's like, it's not a lack of capital. It's really a lack of venture scale companies. So the deal flow is down more so than the willingness to invest. And then, of course, I, I love the, the bit that Stephen Green kind of reinforced that by saying, you know, like Portland's just a great place to build a business, even if there's not venture capital here. As we all know, Portland is just a great place. So whether there's venture capital here or not, I highly encourage you to keep working on your startup, keep pushing through, and keep building that amazing company that you want to see here in Portland. Oregon Venture Fund, formerly known as Oregon Angel Fund, you know, a few weeks back, maybe a month or so, they did a, an AI kind of showcase demo night kind of thing, and it sold out immediately. People are super curious. You know, everybody loves the AI. So, of course, OVF has been inspired to, to do another one. That event takes place April 23rd, and the companies that are on the slate to demo for the OVF PDX AI Demo Night are Diggs, Hello Wonder, Skypoint, and Squidgies. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't know where it is. It's top secret. You have to register and get accepted, and then you can go, and they will be like, this is the location it's happening at. But April 23rd, AI kind of demo showcase. Get to see some amazing companies in the Portland area that are using AI to build their startup. So, And it's AI. Everybody loves the AI. All right, that's it for this week. Don't forget to vote in the Webby Awards. We really want Millen's Park website to win. That would be amazing. I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're doing well. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.